Hey, how you doing? It's Emilio here. We are talking NAS, Network Attached Storage. Which NAS is better than the others. What are the differences between some of the more common NASs that are out there? I know that I got confused when I was trying to look for my next NAS because there's so many models available. There's like a few bays, there's lots of bays, there's lots of RAM, there's little bits of RAM, different CPUs, different configurations. Am I gonna go for a desktop? Am I gonna go for a rack-based NAS? And so hopefully this video clarifies some things and maybe gives you some tips. I've got four different types of configurations of NASs, four different brands of NASs, and of course, here we are on the YouTube machine. Would love it if you clicked on the subscription button on the bell. Let's me know that you do want to see more of my content. So if you do that, clicking on the bell, you will not miss out on any of those notifications. And also, hey, look, I've got a whole bunch of training courses for tech people. Even if you're not techie, but you want to know more about tech, courses on lots of stuff. On storage, we talk about NAS. We're going to be talking about Synology. We talk about Terramaster. We talk about, you know, the QNAP, a full training courses on the those, as well as other stuff on Windows Server, on VMware, on cybersecurity, on IT management, on strategy stuff. We cover all of it. So go check out some of those courses as well. We've got four, four all up. We've got a QNAP, we've got a Synology, we've got a Terramaster, and we've got an ASUS store. They're all different configurations, two bay, four bay, six bay, and a lot more. And we're gonna go through each one of these. We're gonna show you the difference between the two different configuration types, which you can tell these top three are desktop based NASs, desktop, which means it can sort of sit on a desk. It doesn't have to, you can go under a desk and go in a cupboard. So they've just called it desktop NASs. And then a rack based NAS, which is the unit down the very bottom. Now here's the thing, these are not the only four brands available. Now these are the four that are the more common ones, but there's other ones like Seagate, Western Digital, who also do the hard drives, and these are the bits that go inside of them. Uh, they also make NASs. You've also got Netgear make NASs as well. And they're commonly gonna be aimed at, you know, like your home user, your small business, even maybe mid-sized businesses. If a tech just needs a simple standard NAS device, they're probably the ones that they're gonna go for. But then if you're looking more enterprise and you want the big stuff, you probably wanna go for the rack-based ones. And some of these will do those rack bases. And you can see that there's a QNAP one down the bottom. But but then you've got a whole other world where you've got NetApp, you've got Dell EMC, you've got the Isilons, you've got all of these big other brands. HP, they do more NAS and SAN devices for a whole plethora of use cases. Let's first define the NAS, right? Very quickly, NAS is a network attached storage. Then you've got a SAN, which is a storage area network. And NAS is a file-based device. You can set up shares, right? You can create network shares that can be shared across Mac, Windows computers, other devices on your network, SMB shares, NFS shares, KIF shares, and all of these computers can access the files that are stored on, like in, inside of them. You can also set these up with virtualization platforms such as VMware, Proxmox, so you can actually use the storage that's on here for those storage devices. Then you've got the SAN devices, stands for Storage Area Networks, and this is what's called block-based, and you're gonna be creating these things called LUNs, you've got iSCSI, you've got initiators, you've got fiber channel, and they're also co commonly gonna be found in the corporate world, and they're also used for virtualization platforms, but it's not file-based. So you can't create shares in the traditional way that you can with a file-based unit. All of these four, right, and the other brands that I've mentioned, commonly can be used for both. Now they are NAS devices for the most part, right? You can use them for NAS device purposes, but you can also use them for SAN device purposes, which means you can actually convert some of these or at least use some of these to create iSCSI initiators. You can actually use these to create LUNs and then share them out on your network. That's for a whole other day and a whole other conversation. Now, the nice thing about all four of these, right, and the other brands, they all can be used for apps, right? They've all got their own app store, which means you can go and install applications inside of them. They can all act as servers. So you can install server grade applications, essentially software. You can run virtualization computers on them, right? That's pretty cool. You can run media servers. You can set them up with proxies. You can set them up as firewalls, as VPNs. You can do all these other cool things. Okay, let's start with the one at the very top. This is my Terramaster. You can see that this is a two bay NAS. It has a whole bunch of ports on the back. This one came with a couple of USB 3s. 
HDMI, and also a couple of 2.5 gigabit ethernet. That is impressive for me. This is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Very, very cool. And there's two of them, so you can set them up with redundancy. You can also take advantage of higher throughput if you set those up accordingly. Now, this one we'll say is more of a budget-friendly NAS. However, it doesn't skimp on the performance. It comes with the operating system, which is the TerraMaster operating system software. It's very, very straightforward, very, very easy to use, and very, very easy to set up. So if you're looking for an affordable NAS, one that gets you started, the TerraMaster is probably where it is at. And I can install either two and a half inch or three and a half inch SATA hard drives. You can set them up with a RAID, you can do all of that sort of jazz and get your redundancy from your storage perspective. And then we got this one right over here. This is the ASUS store. Let's just open up this little cover. There you go. You can actually see what's going on. There's four of them. There's four hard drives that are available in this one. Again, two and a half inch, three and a half inch SATA. And this one offers competitive pricing and pretty impressive hardware specs. I'm actually quite impressed with this one. It has its own operating system, an ASUS store operating system, and it has fantastic performance and all of that jazz. Now on the back of my one, I've got a couple of USBs and a single ethernet. Now on the front, this one also comes with a nice button where I can just push and I can start backing up automatically as long as I have it set up with the right backup software. And that's what's cool about these two is you can install backup software onto them and actually use them to backup data across devices on your network, backup the data on your NAS, and then backup the data maybe to another NAS, sort of do like replication between the two models. Now, both of these have got a whole bunch of LEDs on the front. You've got your power button on the front and LEDs letting you know the power switched on and whether your, you know, your hard drives are working well or not and which hard drives are connected. Installing the hard drives, very, very easy to do. Then we're gonna move on to our Synology NAS. Now this is a little bit bigger than the other two. This one has six bay. And of course, similar to the ASUS store and the TerraMaster, the Synologies also come in a range of sizes, but you can get these in larger and in smaller configurations. My Synology NAS being six, bays, you can actually get it in two bays as well. And you can get the TerraMaster much bigger. And here's a little sneak peek is that these three, you can also, the brands, you can also get them in rack based ones like the one over here if you wanna put it into a rack server rack cabinet. Now Synology is one of the most popular NAS brands out there. Uh, it's known for a really, really awesome user-friendly interface. It's got a really, really good DSM, which is essentially the software that is running on our Synology NAS. Really good security features and has fantastic updates that are released quite regularly. There's a significantly large community of Synology users. Synology is probably one of the most popular NAS brands out there for good reason. I'm not gonna tell you that this is the best one yet though, but it has a fantastic community behind it because there's so many people using them, you're gonna get fantastic support and Synology support themselves are really, really good. Now six bay, two and a half inch, three and a half inch hard drives. Now on the back of my one, couple of USBs, two eSATA ports can take advantage of additional capacity there. And this one came with four ethernets. So I can get incredible throughput, incredible failover and redundancy. Now my Synology now, this one allowed me to also install MVME storage inside of it, essentially for this technology called fast caching. Caching? That's cache. In Australia, we say cache. Don't come and comment, which a lot of you have done that before and tell me that I'm wrong. I don't care, whatever. Essentially allowing you to write data to your cache and get better performance out of your NAS when it needs to read access things quickly and re, you know write stuff back and forth in a much faster performance. So uh, that's the nice thing about that one. These two did not have that ability. However, there are other models that may. All right, let's just pause there for a second. Now, the top three are desktop based NASs, okay? Which means they're not made for a rack. Now, when I say a rack, I'm talking about here in the corporate world, in the enterprise world, you've got server racks, right? It's very common that if you work in a business, that business probably has some cabinets with servers and networking stuff and switches and all of that sort of stuff, and maybe some storage devices as well. And you can you know, commonly put rails on the side of some of these devices, and then you slide them in to a rack. So it's just much neater, much nicer, and you can get a lot of performance because the things are generally bigger. Now these three can't really be railed because they don't have the 
ability to put rail stick rails on the side. So if you are thinking about getting one of these for a business, right, and the business has a data center, a server room, and there are cabinets in there, maybe consider getting the rack of that NAS but you're gonna be paying for that because they're more expensive. Anyway, that's the differences between the two. The one down the bottom is a QNAP. Now this is a QNAP rack, right? You get the desktop form factor and you got the rack form factor. The bits inside of it are pretty similar. Now the QNAP is known for its amazing versatility and very, very high performance. Also has its own QNAP software, its operating system with a whole bunch of apps, allows you to do virtualization, run a whole bunch of multimedia features. They're great for power users, they're great for businesses. And this one, because it's a rack, you can slide it in. Now this particular one, I can stick a lot more hard drives. On the very front, you can probably see, oh, it's only got four, well no. Four hard drives can go on the front, both two and a half inch and three and a half inch capacities. But then when you open the thing up, you can actually stick additional two and a half inch hard drives inside of the unit. It is pretty cool. And you can pump this one with a lot more RAM. The other three, in some cases, depending on the configuration, depending on the model, you may need to buy the RAM already built inside of the unit. Some of them will allow the user, you and me, to be able to open it up and put our own additional RAM or expand the RAM if we want to, but not all of them will allow you to do this. On the back, we've got ourselves four USBs. You've also got an expansion slot where I can add additional cards, additional multimedia into the back of them, and four ethernet points, similar to my Synology NAS, where I can allow better throughput, better bandwidth, failover, redundancy, all that sort of stuff. The other thing that it's got is it's got dual powers because this is now aimed at the power user, at the enterprise business user, you need dual powers. All right, so which one should you get? Here's a few things you need to consider. Jot these things down. The first, what is the purpose of the thing? Why do you need a NAS? What is the use case of the NAS? What is the whole intention of you wanting a NAS in the first place? Have a think about what sort of things you wanna be running on it. Do you want it to just be storing files? Do you want it to also be running applications? Then have a think about the performance, right? We've shown you the performance, the bits inside of that. The nice thing about all four is you can go and customize the NAS that is right for you based on the performance that is right for you. If you're gonna be running virtualization, if you're gonna be running maybe a Plex media server onto one of these, you may need a little bit more grunt. If you don't care about that stuff, then you can sacrifice some of the performance. As well, you've got a lot more users accessing data, uploading and downloading files back and forth on your NAS. Well, it's probably best that you get one that has a little bit more oomph, if you know what I mean. Now, although all four of them have got a great app store, some of them have got a lot more apps than others. The community of applications out there for some will just be greater than others. Do you care about the bits? How they're built? Some just feel a little bit better quality than others. Some are more plastic casing, some are more metal casing. Some, more fans, less fans. Some are noisier than others. Like, here's the thing, that's not too noisy at all. Very, very quiet. That's not too noisy at all. That thing, my Synology, that's a bit more noisy because it's bigger, right? The one down the bottom, my QNAP, whoa, that's noisy. It's not made for homes. It's a lot more noisy, but it's because they run a lot hotter, right? The bigger ones run hotter, which means that the fans need to run faster. So if noise is a consideration, think about that. I mean, obviously you've got to consider the price. You've got to consider what your budget is because ultimately if you can't afford some of the bigger ones, then don't even bother, right? You want to get the best bang for your buck, as we say down here in Oz. I don't know, do they say that in other countries? I'm not sure. But you want to make sure that you get one that is the best for you and also one that is going to allow you growth into the future so that in the next two, three, four, five years, you're not like, oh man, this NAS is so slow. All this NAS has run out of space. What do I do? So plan ahead of time what your NAS requirements are, right? How much storage you need? What do you want to run on it? Do you want to run applications and things like that? But ultimately the best NAS for you is the NAS that you choose because that is the one that is going to be based on what your requirements are because they all have their benefits. And the nice thing about all of these NASs is that they all have a beautiful GUI, a beautiful portal that you can log in. They've all got all the same similar bells and whistles. They've all got their own application stores. We can download a whole bunch of amazing apps. Some are going 
going to be more catered to more businessy type of users, some a little bit more just for the home users. But if you were to say to me, Emilio, you tell me, I just want you to tell me the answer, which NAS is best. Look, if, if money is not as much of an issue and you're willing to spend a little bit of extra cash to get something that's a little bit better quality, I generally, I'm gonna stick with Synology and QNAP. I think they're probably the two better ones if you're talking about a home, small business sort of environment. Synology is probably a little bit more of my favorites just because I've been using them a little bit longer. But you get a Synology, you get a QNAP, you know it's gonna be a good, sturdy product, built tough, and an incredible support community behind you. And of course, making sure that you're getting yourself enough capacity. So maybe starting off with a four or a five bay NAS, fill it up or even don't fill it up. Just have a couple in there as long as you've got enough room for growth later on. Like I don't think you should get a two bay NAS now and then you find out in six months, 12 months time, you're running out of space. So get something that is a little bit bigger, maybe save up a little bit longer so that you can then get yourself something that's gonna last you a little bit longer. So there you go, they're my thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments which NAS you are thinking of getting yourself. This is the YouTube machine. Do the subscription thing, click on the button on the bell. And remember those training courses on all things tech if you wanna learn more about technology of all different shapes and sizes. Hey, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next tech video.